सहनावतु सहनो भुनत्तु सह वीर करवा शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्य वंदे भगवंत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुराज्ञेति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम समे निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विवर वसुदेव वसुत देव कंसचाणूणमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु We are seeing the seventh chapter, and we are specifically seeing Bhagwan Krishna reveal to us. He is revealing to us the specific places where Bhagwan is to be seen, which is called Vignanam. So Vignanam Teham Savignanam Vakshyami Hamashe Shataha. So Bhagwan is revealing. This vijnanam, and we saw shlokas number eight, nine, and today we will see shloka number ten. Continuing, bijam am sarva bhuta na, vidhi partha sanatanam. सनातनम बीजम Vaan is saying, "Hey Arjuna, Maam, me, Sarva Bhuta Naam, in all beings, Sanatanam Bijam, I am the eternal seed in all beings. You come to know that. Our I should automatically, when whenever, whatever objects, our eyes fall upon, we should." Convert our entire drashti, our gaze should only see that divinity in all beings. It may be a little ant, it may be even a cockroach if it scares you or if it just uh, disgusts you. But you know that cockroach very much it is needed in this entire cycle to keep the worlds clean and free of diseases. Bhagwan says, "I am this. I'm Bijam, and the very seed, Sanatana Bijam, of all beings. You come to know that I am the very seed. I'm the very presence that enlivens all beings. This is for when we see the world." Of beings, we don't see that immediately. We color the world of beings with our raga and vesha. That is what we do. Our likes and dislikes. I like that. I don't like that. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, this is disgusting. So 
any creature, anything that we see, we are continuously using our raga and dvesha. But if we learn to see the world as the extension of Paramatma and He, the very seed in all, He is saying that I am that buddhi hi buddhi matamasmi. I am, Bhagavan is saying, I am the very intelligence in the intelligent. When we see someone who is very sharp, we automatically pass some judgment. But if we learn to see that, you know, that divinity, that very chetana shakti in that person, the very ability for them to dissect finer things into great understanding, that ability is Bhagavan. They may arrogantly own it up, whatever it may be, but for us to understand that oh, the source of it is none other than Bhagavan. That makes us so humble. You know, when we see that, when we process world in this way, it makes us very humble. And it allows us to be so much closer to Bhagavan. This is how the relationship with Bhagavan is cultivated. This is Vijnana. Otherwise, we get so caught up in this worldly living. We don't realize that everything around us is basking in the light of Paramatma. Bhutti hi bhutti matamasmi. Tejas tejas vinamaham. I am the splendor in the most splendid things that we see. The, the tejas that we see in a young brahmachari. The tejas that we see in a nartaki on the stage. The tejas that we see in young students. Vaidic students, Paurohits who sit over there and who memorize so much of the Vedas and the Tejas that we see, it is the extension of Bhagwan, what we are able to see in all these beings. So, this is what Bhagwan is. All this from Rasoham Apsukaunte Ya Prabhasmi. Shashi Surya Yoga, all of these 8, 9, 10, uh, continuing even with 11, Bhagavan is giving us a unique eye. Convert a Samanya Laukik Drashti into a uplifted vision to see Bhagavan. This is Vijnana, Vijnana Yoga. This is the Vijnan Bhagavan is presenting to us. Number 11. Balam Balavatam Asmi Kamaraga Vivarjitam Dharma Viruddho Bhuteshu Dharma Viruddho Bhuteshu Bhagavan says, Hey Bharatar Shabha, Yarjuna, Bhagavan is saying, Balavatam Kamaragavi Varjitam Aham Balam Asmi. You know, Bhagavan is saying, Arjuna, Balavatam. You know, of all the people, the of all the strong people, and then he's saying, Kamaraja Vibarjitam, devoid of desire and attachment. Imagine the strong person devoid of any desire and attachment. Bhagavan says that innocent strength is me. 
usually, you know, people who are working out and they're strong, you know, they flex their muscles and they show the, the strength of their muscle and they show the power that they possess. And that power comes with Kamarag. It comes with great Kamana is there to show off Rag. And you may see in these muscular people, they continuously look at themselves in the mirror and flex and all of those more and more Rag. And they're so fit and yet 20 hours in gym is not enough. Because it is smitten with calm and rag. The perfect, perfectly sculpted body. And yet, they themselves will find little bit of dosha with it. Such people, Bhagavan is saying, right, just born out of calm. But the strength, the quiet one who possesses strength, lives a very humble life and helps others out and there is no pomp and show about the strength. That strength. Bhagavan says, that strength is me. Because if the strength is born out of calm and rag, in no time it will go away. Calm and rag meaning, you know, out of desire and attachment. Bhagavan is saying that while we are seeing it, we should also flush ourselves out of this desire and attachment. What else are we over here for? You know, we acquire name, fame, power, position, wealth, status, all this, you know, because of the blessings of our ancestors we are enjoying status in our life, our good education, everything. And we should be grateful that our forefathers, their tapascharya is what we are living. How much, you know, our parents have gone through in India, their sacrifice so that they can send a child to foreign country for higher education. <coughs> and when we just say that, oh, I have no idea the hardships I went through in this country and all the sacrifices I went through, the food that I had to eat, I lived on some potatoes and salad. Yeah, we may say all those things, but somebody else's sacrifice is also there in giving us education, in giving us good life. And that is their strength, their innocent strength. Kamaragavivarjitam, they have given it to us. The forbearance of each parent to make sure that the next generation, the child, Succeeds in life. There is a true strength in life, isn't it? Not just flexing muscles in front of some mirror. But the sacrifice. And the ability to do that without even flaunting it and telling people. The silent strength that we produce from within to forbear putting our own desires on side and helping to uplift somebody else. That Bhagavan is saying over here, Balam Balavatam Asmi. That is true strength. The strength to forbear everything. Then, dhar, uh, over here, Bhagavan is saying, Bhuteshu Dharma avirud. So, kama aham asmi. Bhagavan is you know, qualifying very. So over, uh, in the earlier three shlokas that we saw, 
Bhagwan is just enumerating. Quickly, we are able to see, oh, the sapidity in the water, the, the very light in Agni Tattva and things like that. Pranava Sarva Vedeshu, Shabda Ke Paurusham Lushu, Punyo Ghanda Prithibhyam. All of these things, just Samanya things that we see, but the very fine understanding is now what is presented in this shloka that we are seeing that Bhuteshu in beings, dharma aviruddha kamana. People all have desires, but the desires which are selfish, the desires where we break the code of dharma to satisfy all our needs, but a kamana where, a desire where, it is in line with dharma. And it takes a great amount of moral fiber to stand up for one's own convictions and beliefs and say, I'm not going to do this. This is not appropriate. And to see such a person and recognize that, Bhagavan is saying that is Vijnan. So he's giving layers of our understanding. Just a Samanya Buddhi, oh, sapidity in water, I should not waste water. But then to ability to see that somebody is walking the path of Dharma. It takes a while to recognize and their desires are all in line with nobility, goodness, righteousness, not just self-upliftment, but the upliftment of society. To recognize such a person and to acknowledge that there are beings like that. And our drashti has picked up on it. That is what we saw in the morning as sukshma buddhi. So the sukshma buddhi now picks up vijnana. The earlier the samanya buddhi, and we start our journey in learning to do darshan of Bhagavan. But to see Bhagavan in order, Rutam Madishyami, Satyam Madishyami, Tanma Mavatu, Tadvaktar Mavatu. Avatumam, avatu avatuvaktaram. Then we see, oh Bhagavan, protect such a person, protect such a person. Avatuvaktaram, avatuvaktaram. It's a prayer that a student and teacher do before starting the Upanishad. And the student recognizes, oh, what is my bhagya? Getting a chance to learn. May such speakers of Brahma Vidya be protected, O Bhagavan. Student sees the nobility in the work that the teacher does. This is in our Upanishad in Shanti Mantra. This is a fine understanding of Vijnana. When the student has not Student is in journey of Brahma Vidya, and yet the student recognizes it. And we know that such a student is going to reach. So, what a beautiful way. Swa dharma anushthanam samartyam balam. Shankaracharya in his Bhashya, so many ways, and beautifully he says, Swa dharma anushthanam samartyam iti balam. The person's ability to abide in one's own swat dharma. That is balam. It takes courage to stand up. To stand up for one's own beliefs, one's own convictions and righteousness. Then, a prapta vastu kama and prapta vastu ni ragaha. So, that is a Shankaracharya ji. I'm just giving you little, little things as to what Shankaracharya ji says in his Bhashya. It's very, the chapter seven, sometimes, you know, 
very simple bhashya he writes because he said it is very self-explanatory. So this Vijnan Bhagwan is saying that it is so beautifully over here enumerated for us to pick up. And you know, I in Balvihar camps, I make children come up with their own five different Vijnan. They come up with it. How are you going to recognize Bhagwan? Someone may say, oh, next time when I see a plant, Swamiji, I'm not going to unnecessarily pluck the leaves. Oh, very good. The ability in this plant to grow and bless the environment with fresh air. Unnecessarily, why uh, kick a stone? That's what uh, another kid said. Then why kick a stone? It is a manifestation of this universe because isn't Swamiji Shivalinga a stone? Oh, what a beautiful connection this kid made. If a Shivalinga is a stone, then who knows? There may be Shiva in this stone that I'm kicking. So we can utilize this even in our teachings of little children and helping them understand how do I see the extension of the absolute divinity in the world presented in front of us. Continuing, shloka number 12. Ye chai vasatvika avaha Rajasastam Sashchaye Rajasastam Sashchaye Matta Eveti Tan Vidhi Matta Eveti Tan Vidhi Natvaham Teshu Te Mai Natvaham Teshu Te Mai So Bhagavan very beautifully says that ye Whatever objects over here, Jaiva, Satvika, Bhavaha, Cha, Rajasas, Cha, Tamasas, Cha, Bhavaha. Over here, uh, what is meant by Bhavaha is whatever has manifested, whatever exists, uh, whatever occurs in this natural world with sattvic bhav, with rajasic bhav, with tamasic bhav. Tamo guna, we see the khanij padar, the, the world of minerals and um, all of the ma material matter, world of matter. Tamo guna pradhan prakrit. Rajoguna Pradhan Prakruti, we see all types of animals and birds. The entire plant kingdom, animal kingdom, all smitten with Rajoguna, they're moving about. And then the uh, Sattvaguna Pradhan, we see people meditating, going for a walk in the morning. Once, praying in the temple, the expression of Sattva Guna, those working in soup kitchen, just helping out. That's it. So many extensions of Sattvic Gunas. <laughs> so whatever beings Objects that exist with Rajoguna, with Sattvic Guna, with Tamo Guna, all of them, Bhagavan says, Matta Eve Titan Vitti. You understand that all of these are born out of me. And then the Mahavakya of this particular chapter, Natvaham Teshu Temayi. 
is very important. It is the Mahavakya Bhagavan throws over here. See, we are all born out of the three gunas of Prakriti. And born out of the three gunas of Prakriti, Bhagavan says, all of them are born out of me. But then having taken birth out of these three gunas, and then when we exercise our own desires and we act upon those desires, Bhagavan says, I am not in that. Very unique. And that is why we ourselves have our own Karana Sharira. Because this Karana Sharira we have created. Bhagavan says, that is not me. But all this is born out of Paramatma. So we are born out of him. All of these born out of Pancha Mahabhu. But then, having acquired this body, all that we do, some people put tattoos and piercings and this and that. He said, I just gave you a body. It was up to you how you use this body. And if we abuse gross body, if we abuse subtle body, then Bhagavan says, that is your choice. I am not in your choice. But the rest exists in me. It's a very powerful statement. This is also Vijnan. Unique Vijnan Bhagavan is revealing to us. Why is he revealing this to us? So that we improve our choices. This is Natu Aham Teshu Te Mayi Mahavakya. This is a great aphorism of this chapter. All this is strung in me. One says, uh, but what the individual chooses to do. I am not in that. So, ye chaiva sattvika bhavaha, our own, the sattvic temperament, the rajasic temperament, tamasic temperament. Gurudev used to call this the climatic conditions of our prakriti. He had beautiful words he used. He said, this is our thermostat. The climatic condition of our Prakruti, inside we set the thermostat to whatever degrees. But what is the climatic condition over here? That adjustment is done by these three gunas. And we should adjust it in such a way that we should know how to uplift ourselves from a guna which takes us towards choices which are inappropriate. Because then Bhagavan says, I'm not in those. Yes, guna is born out of me. But what you choose to do with the guna is yours. This is a very unique, uh, very unique teaching Bhagavan is revealing to us. Now, this itself, this choice that we exercise, it itself becomes karana for samsara. Bhagavan doesn't have samsara. We saw the first day and yesterday, Shuddha Brahma, Karana Brahma, Karya Brahma. Bhagavan is Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Swarupaha. And all this is just nothing but projection. But in this projection, if we are caught up, then the samsara is to us. Samsara is not from Bhagavan. 
एंड एक्चुअली वी इन आवर कल्चर इज क्या करे स्वामी जी ये संसार है अरे संसार इज नॉट आउटसाइड संसार इज एक्चुअली इन हियर इट इज इन हियर आउटसाइड इट इज जस्ट हिज क्रिएशन दैट्स इट पीरियड we have convoluted it and understood in a different way and we call that samsara and then we project that oh that is what is outside and that is bothering me so from shlokas 13 to 19 bhagwan shows us how this jiva walks away from vignyan and gnyan and creates samsara and if he bhagwan says uh if the samsara exists and there has to be some parihara to come out of it and bhagwan will even teach you know parihara to come out of it so number 13 tribhir gunamayair bhavai hi tribhir gunamayair bhavai hi जगत मोहित नाभ्य परम व्यय इद जगत भगवान इदम सर्वम जगत दिस एंटायर वर्ल्ड भगवान इज सेइंग दिस वर्ल्ड ए भी बाय ऑल दिस त्रिभी गुण मय भाव बाय दिस थ्री गुणास the world is pervaded the entire world is nothing but pervaded by these three gunas the whole world when we say karan brahma you know this is the avyakta prakruti and when this avyakta maya becomes manifest she becomes the solid transactional world of plurality pervaded by the three gunas the satvik the rajasik and the tamasik gunas bhagwan says mohitam na abhijanati the one who doesn't understand that the world is pervaded by these three gunas will not understand next time when you see something beautiful when you see something delightful superimpose upon it sattva guna understand it is born out of sattva if you see something smitten with movement rajoguna superimpose upon it understand it is born out of rajas the bird which flies early in the morning looking for its worm superimpose the idea understand that propelled by the rajoguna the bird takes on to the fly when you see that praying mantis sitting over there very quietly not a single movement as though it is part of the leaf of the plant it is cashing in on the tamo guna to express its life 
it is not in tamas, but it mimics tamoguna. If we understand while in nature, if we see various things and we say and we attribute that ma me bhyaf param avyayam, me, ma me bhyaha, born out of me, Bhagavan says, maam e param avyayam, this uh, immutable, this higher self, from that all this has come out. Immediately our mind, the attention shifts towards Brahman, shifts towards Bhagavan. <coughs> but the one who is deluded, they will not understand this. And because they do not understand that the Trigunatmika Maya is born out of Bhagavan, now this Maya itself uh, deludes them. And this is how uh, Bhagavan further talks about what this power of Maya is. <clears throat> Devi Yesha Gunamayi Mama Maya Duratyaya Mame Vaye Prapadyante Maya Me Tam Tarantite he said, Esha, he, Esha, Bhagavan uses this feminine noun over here, Devi, she is divine. This Maya, Bhagavan says, this Trigunatmika Maya, born out of these three gunas, Mama Maya, she's mine. Because Karan Brahma, where did it come from? Him, that Shuddha Brahma from Shuddha Brahma itself is this Karana Brahma. And this Karana is for Shrishti. This Karana Brahma is none other than Maya. So Bhagavan says, this Mama Maya, Guna Maish, she who is endowed with the Gunas, Duratyaya, she is very difficult. Very difficult to cross. Very difficult, Bhagavan says, to transgress, to cross. This maya is very difficult. Jnani nama pichetam si devi bhagavati hisa balad akrushya mohaya maha maya prayachati. Jnani nama pichetamsi is said. The chetana shakti of wise men, learned people. Jnani nama pichetamsi, Devi Bhagavati Hisa, this Devi, this divine goddess. Balad Akrushyam, with great power. She steals away her ignorance. Mahamaya. You know, we have to be eternally be in surrender to Bhagavan. One little ahankar, the lesson that Maya teaches us is powerful. Durga Saptashati, this shloka, this power of Maya. We have to be so vigilant 
that we do not exercise any one of these powers and very humbly use this equipment and that is it. This, Bhagavan says, Gunamai mama maya duratyaya mame vaye prapatyante maya me tam tarantite The one who surrenders to me, uh, Bhagavan says, mame vaye prapatyante the one who surrenders to me, I will make sure he crosses over the maya. Because it is his Maya. Gurudev used to call Maya Mrs. Brahman. So, Gurudev used to say, the Mrs. Brahman, you better be very careful with Mrs. Brahman. And for that, we have to surrender to Bhagavan. And when we surrender to Bhagavan. So what is surrender? A simple attitude of gratitude is surrender. Every day acknowledging what we have. Our drashti is always on the cup which is half empty. But when we recognize what is in there and we offer our sincere gratitude for what we do have, that is inching towards Bhagavan says me. Over here, Mameva ye prapatyante. So prapatti. Prapatti sharanagati. Sharanagati, Vallabhacharya ji uses as Pushti. And the path also he calls it Pushti Math. Where he offers protection because we have taken refuge in him. And that recognition is uh, Sharanagati. That attitude of gratitude. Acknowledging what we have. Another way is sharing what we have. In fourth chapter, Bhagwan had presented 30 yajnas. Indriya yajna, Dan yajna. So many things we can do. We can Keep our senses under control. That is another way of surrendering to Bhagavan. Using this equipment on this path of Dharma, that is also another way of prapatti, sharanagati to Bhagavan. In the Shri Vidya Pantheon, there is Raj Rajeshwari. And then there is uh, Raj Matangi. And then there is Raj Varahi. So, uh, Raj Shyamala Mantrini, she is known as, she writes the code of the universe. And the code of the universe is Dharma. And on the other side is Raj Varahi. She's also known as Dandini. She makes sure that people follow this code. And as long as one is caught up with uh, Mantrini and Dandini, Raj Rajeshwar is not even available for that person. But the minute one learns to follow the rules of Mantrini, and Dandini opens up the path, you go. That is over here, Mameva Ye Prapatyante. This has to be processed in so many different ways. 
Maya metam tarantite. And then once we approach the Raj Rajeshwari, she herself is a Maharagni. And she herself is the Raj Maya. So let us go. Direct path to her concert, Shiva Tattva. Go. The path to Shivji, we have, we have to clear it through her. And she controls this. And that is what Bhagavan is saying, that we surrender. And once we surrender, Maya metam tarantite. Bhagavan, in Bhagavad Gita, simple surrender to Ishvara. Continuing. Namam Dushkruti no Buddha. Namam Dushkruti no Buddha. Prapatyante Naradhamaha. Prapatyante Naradhamaha. Maya ya apahruta jnana ha. Asuram bhava mashrita ha. So now over here, why are people not coming? To surrender to Bhagavan. Why are people completely diverging away and drowning themselves in Maya? Why are people tortured and tormented by Maya? Bhagavan says over here, Bhagavan says, Mudaha. Gurudev used to say, those people who have acquired PhD in stupidity. Mudaha. This is the only bad word in Sanskrit. Over here, Mudaha deluded ones. No? Mudaha, Bhagavan is saying, and then Dushkrutinaha. Not only are these people deluded, but then they are positively evil doers. Dushkrutinaha. Then, Nara Adhamaha. They are Nareshu Adhamaha. They are very low, even though human beings, but behavior worse than animals. Just by the equipment, they are called human beings, not by the behavior. Naradhamaha and such people, Mayaya Apakruta Jnanaha. They are Mayaya by Maya, Jnanam Apakruta. The, the knowledge is stolen away. They are intellectually bankrupt. No knowledge available. Studied, learned, not available. Don't know how to use it. Knowledge is, that knowledge, it should be available when it is needed. What is the point of studying all this and then when we have to apply it, not available. Then we make the same mistakes that we have made. And what's the point of studying then? If we continue to live the life the same way we have lived, even after studying, that means we are really not using knowledge, applying knowledge, or knowledge is not available. So, such people, Asuram Bhava Bhashritaha, they are taking refuge to this demonical quality. And such people, Bhagavan says, Namam Prapatyante. How can they come to surrender to me? 
And if they don't come to surrender to me, how will they cross Maya? This is what Bhagavan says, samsara karana. This becomes the cause of our fall. Bhagavan doesn't want us to be highly intelligent. He also doesn't want to be ignorant. Bhagavan is seeing just use what is given to you. That is it. So, over here, mm, different types of gradation of people, asuram bhavam, that is the extreme sense indulgent, extroverted is what is known as asuram bhavam ashritaha. Then mayaya apahruta jnanaha is people who have rajo guna pradhan prakruti, continuously doing, 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 not thinking. So, Rajoguna, smitten Prakriti. And this Dushkruti Naha, Papi Naha, Naradamaha, Atishayatamo Guna Prakriti. So, indulgent Prakriti, Rajoguna Prakriti, Tamo Guna Prakriti. These three prakritis Bhagwan has described, which is the cause of samsara. So, if we find in ourselves to say, kya kare, kya samsar hai, so then we have to, Are, I said this. What category am I? Am I Atishai Rajasik? then we have to self-calibrate ourselves. Am I a tamasic prakriti? Oh, I better go towards rajas and then towards sattva. And papinaha, what to do? At least some dharmachar we have to come to. So this is a teaching over here. Bhagavan is saying in case Jnan is not available, forget about Vijnan. What Vijnan? Maya ya apavruta jnana ha. Oh, there is no Vijnan over here. We have to really pay attention to ourselves. Where am I slipping? What am I missing? What am I missing? We owe it to ourselves to cultivate Sattva Guna in our life. We do. Sattva Guna by itself is not going to come. We have to cultivate by habit. This is how we grow. This is how we change Prakriti. Bhagavan already said that if we make certain choices and if the choices are inappropriate, Bhagavan says, yeah, the gunas are born out of me, but the mistakes you are making, those are positively your mistakes. And these are the positive mistakes that we make by surrendering to Rajoguna, surrendering to Tamoguna and extreme extrovertedness. Rajo Tamo admixture Prakruti, the Rajasik Asuram Bhava Mashritaha. So, this is what Bhagavan is saying about 
prakruti bhed and how prakruti bhed if we uh, are destitute to it then we will create more and more samsar and what is more and more samsar more and more appointment with the future that is what this is our appointment with future This is over here, Karna Sharira. Now, four types of people Bhagavan describes. Chatur Vidha Bhajante Ma. Jana Sukruti Norjuna. Sukruti Norjuna. Arto Jigna Surarthati Arto Jigna Surarthati Jnani Chabharatar Shabha Did I say Arto? It should be Arto. Okay, my mistake if I chanted incorrectly. Arto Jigna Surarthati So, okay, Bhagavan says Hey Arjuna, Bhagavan says, Hey Bharatarshava, over oh, here, Sukrutinaha. So, last shloka, Dushkrutinaha. Now, these are the good doers. And who are these good doers as opposed to the evil doers of the last shloka? Now, these ones, Bhagavan is saying that Chatur Vidha Maam Janaha Bhajante. Four types of people, they come to worship me. And who are these four types of people? Bhagavan says, Artaha. Bhagavan says, Artaha Jignyasuhu. Then Artharthi and Gnani. So, Artha, the person who is in distress. A person who is in pain. <laughs> One who is in trouble. Good person, but they find themselves in pain. Then, Artharthi. The second type of person is not in pain, but he is desirous of some objects in life. He wants to possess something. Jignyasu, the third one, he's not in pain. He doesn't want objective reality, but he has desire to know. Who is this Bhagavan? Where is this Bhagavan? How do I do sadhana to reach him? Is what I'm doing enough or do I need to do more? Is it Jignyasu? And then the fourth one, Gnani. The one who has reached Bhagavan. The knower of the self. So these are the four. Now, Art. You know, the ones who are in distress. You know, we studied in, uh, did Vedanta course in Mumbai, Sandipani Sadhnalaya. It's in Pavai. And in our ashram, we have Jagdishwara temple, this Bhagwan Shivji's temple. And Monday, you know, you see so many people come. And people come with um, bags of some flowers, agarbatti, some people, coconut, um, you know, this crystal sugar, some whatever people want to bring for Bhagavan Shivji, they come over there. And there are people who are very regular on Mondays. And, you know, they battle Mumbai traffic and come from different, different corners. Some person, you know, takes two hours of Ghatkopar and all these places they come. Nahi, bus. 
भगवान शिव जी के लिए मंडे आना है एंड यू विल सी दम एवरी मंडे आफ्टर द आरती इज डन प्रवचन इज देयर दे डोंट वॉन्ट प्रवचन बस भगवान को एक कोकोनट दे दिया हो गया दो घंटे ट्रैफिक में इनफ these people well, there is nothing wrong in their life but belief is bhagwan is going to bless them job mil jayegi bacche ki shaadi ho jayegi what all things that firm faith bhagwan is going to take care of all these things and then you know tuesday to sunday a few people come not very really. शिवजी मीनिंग ओनली मंडे वी हैव टू वर्शिप हिम इन रेस्ट ऑफ द डेज इट्स ओके बट यू नो वी वी स्टडीड ओवर देयर एंड वी सी द एज ग्रुप पैटर्न मोस्टली पीपल यू नो हाउस होल्ड लाइफ आर द वंस हु कम देन कम्स फेब्रुवरी एंड मार्च and it is board board exams maharashtra board exams are there and from nowhere we will see these youth coming after the exams april onwards not a single youth will show up. so that is called arth they are in distress maharashtra state board is going to rule my future some comes of bhagwan 60% am asking bus <laughs> someone will be there no 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 i'm coming over here on this end of pavai lake next fall i want to be the other end of pavai lake it's iit pavai <laughs> and for that even 99 is not enough in maharashtra board you need 99 point some asks for 60 some for 99.9 some 99.99 this is a distress art after this over cricket is there <laughs> then cricket comes out again so householders arthartha brahmacharis art and then there are some jignyasu such a huge city we are studying over there and our satsang is in our temple itself and these people they go to work early in the morning go home finish everything quickly come they will miss bhagwan's aarti but as everybody is leaving from the temple they will quickly come and sit in the back of the hall and listen to satsang chiknyasu these are like two chiknyasu you know the difficult life of the city and every day <coughs> we complain about traffic you should hear their traffic stories and for such a person to clear out <coughs> monday through friday for satsang that is something and after satsang is over then they will have private moment with bhagwan shiv ji everybody is gone not just on mondays all friday is a true genius true genius Bhagwan, today you called me for satsang. I offer my gratitude. 
And some of these people, they don't even have money for a coconut, you know. I've seen them. We feel so privileged sitting over there as brahmacharis. Our roti, kapda, or makan, some kuch taken care of. And we just have to study Shastra. And there are people who are craving for it. Sitting in that temple, I could see this whole Sukrutinaha. Good doers in this world. But as per our bhagya, we are where we are. What a powerful scene if we see, you know, most populated country, ours is. Just silently sit on a side and just watch a temple, a Siddhivinayak temple, any temple. And you see what happens over there. You will be able to see this. The Dushkrutina will not even come over there. They will, the next street over, they will go. Not even the, the same street. So, Bhagavan says that Arjuna, what to, what to say? Now he is saying, Tesham Jnani Nitya Yuktaha Tesham Jnani Nitya Yuktaha Eka Bhaktir Vishishyate Eka Bhaktir Vishishyate Priyo Hi Jnani No Tyartham Priyo Hi Jnani No Tyartham Aham Sachama Mapriyaha Bhagavan says, Tesham, of all these four, Nitya Yuktaha Eka Bhakti Gnani Hi Vishishyate. Bhagavan says, of all these four, he says, this Nitya Yuktaha, ever yoke in my presence, Gnani. Eka Bhakti, the mind ever given to me. Such a person, Vishishyate, Bhagavan says, this person, he excels. Not this, not just that, Priyo hi Jnani no. Bhagavan says, this Jnani naha is Atyartham Mama Priya. He's very dear to me. Why? Aham such a Mama Priya. Because he and I are one. And I am dear to myself and he is me. And thus he is most dear to me. Because in his mind, there is no difference between me and him. He has reached me. And I am him. This is what Bhagavan saying what a beautiful this this topic of vijnan is very unique it is available and yet it is not available it is so easily available when we look at this world water and fire and heat and light and uh, the entire created world but we are so caught up in our guna created world that his created world is absent in us. That is what he is saying. We are too caught up in our own created world of our gunas. Borrowing the prakriti from him, his guna, yet we have manufactured something inside that we make, we make sure Bhagwan remains so far from us. In fact, we push him away by our convoluted thinking. This is what Bhagwan is saying and thus I am not available. 
we will continue tomorrow. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Akashit Dukkha Bhagavate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om